Hi, my name is Beth Hiley with Board Game Geek for BGGCon 2011. Today we're here to do a rules explanation of Poseidon's Kingdom, which is published by Fragor Games. Start by placing all of the Kraken Coral tokens up here randomly along the top of the board. There's two blank tokens, you can leave those in the game box. Next, starting with the start player, they're going to place their character here at the head of the Kraken. And going around the table, they're going to place their characters in every other spot around the Kraken Traken. Next, you're going to take one of each friend counter and put those at each of these spots around the Kraken as well. And finally, you're going to take and sort all of the safe place tokens, as denoted by the picture of the place fish on the opposite side and find the matching dice symbol here around the Kraken. So a pair of four dice, a pair of four dice. So all the uh, safe place tokens that have a pair of four dice are gonna go in a pile there, starting with the highest value number on top and going down to the smallest. Each player is going to place one of their characters at either end of the board. They're also going to take their reef tokens, which are color coded to their character's color, and arrange them however they like. Then finally, starting with the start player, who is the person who has a character at the head of the Kraken Traken, is going to start by placing dice going around the table one at a time on top of the wave. You're also going to place three neutral dice on top of the wave as well. Once the wave is full to start the game off, we're going to break the wave. Wherever the dice fall, that's the tidal area region where the dice will be placed and if any fall off the board they're going to be reset back up onto the wave. Now before you begin the game each person is going to add two more dice to the top of the wave again placing them one at a time going around the table in turn order. If you decide to expand your reef, you're going to add one of these additional tiles to the beginning set that you began with that are in your player color. Now when you add a tile, it always has to straddle across two tiles that are underneath it. So you can never directly place it right on top of another. You also can't hang a tile off the edge or hang it over different levels. So I have one that sort of drapes from uh, two pieces of cardboard down to one. Finally, you can't build over a die. If you had a die from a previous round, you can't build on top of that. And if you are unlucky enough to acquire some dead spots, we'll talk about that a little later, you can't build over those either. Other than that, you can place this wherever you want. And you can also choose any one of these from the selection as long as there's still some available. If you decide to add to the wave, just a reminder that that means you cannot expand your reef. You can only pick one or the other. So you're either adding dice up here or you're adding a tile to your reef, but never both. But if you decide that the wave is your thing, then you're going to add one or more dice to the wave. Well, everyone has the ability to add at least one die on their turn, but the only way that you're going to be able to add more is if you have this matching wave symbol somewhere in your reef. Now, this will apply for the next three symbols that we're going to talk about when adding to your reef. It's not how many of these symbols you have, it's how tall they are, the highest level. And some of you from Antics may remember that same mechanic. So I have one wave symbol here in my reef already. It's on the second level cardboard, which means I can add two dice to, re to the reef this turn. Even if I had two symbols, they're both still only on the second level, so I can only add two dice. If I build a third one on the third level, I'm now going to be able to build three dice. So it doesn't matter how many are pictured here, it just matters how tall the highest one is. So I could have only one pictured, like so, and I would still get to be able to place three dice. Once I determine how many dice I can place, I can put them wherever I want as long as there is a box still pictured on the top side of the wave. Once you're done either expanding your reef or building on the wave, you're going to move one of your characters. 
And on your turn, you're actually required to move one of your characters. And you're going to move it at least one space. But if you have this symbol in your reef, then that may possibly allow you to move more. And the rules for this movement icon are exactly the same as we saw for the adding the wave icon. Depending on the highest level of this movement icon, affects how many spaces you can move. So my my uh, arrow symbol here is on the second level, so I'm going to be able to move two spaces. And I am the starfish player, so I'm going to go one, two. Now all of your players can follow the dotted lines that are all across the board. There's basically a loop around the entire edge of the board, but there's also two cross pieces here that you can use to travel from one side of the board to the other in a single movement. On your turn, during your movement, you can move either one of your characters, so I could have moved the starfish down there, but you can't move both. You're also limited to only moving in one direction, so if you're going to move down towards the shore, you have to continue your movement only towards the shore, and if you choose to move out to the deep sea, then you have to continue moving only in that direction. Once you've completed your movement, this part of your turn is now optional. If you want, you may eat some food that is in the same titles area as you are, so in this row. Now this part is optional, so you don't have to eat the food or the dice if you don't want to. But if you do, everyone starts with a base eating power of one die. And the last symbol that we're going to talk about on your reef is the eating symbol. So if you have some of this eating dice that affects how many more dice you can take off the board in a single turn. And the rules are the same as they were for movement and for building to the wave. It's the height of the tallest one of these eating symbols. So again, I've placed this uh, sample tile here on the second level, so I'm allowed to eat two dice off the board. Now when I eat these dice, I now have a choice that I have to make right now. I can either store these dice on my reef if I have the space, or I can attempt to free my friends from the Kraken. Now this is my one and only chance to make this decision. I either store or f rescue. I cannot do both. So if I'm going to put anything here on my reef, that's all I'm going to do with these dice this turn. Now let's say instead of storing my dice, I want to free my friends. So perhaps these are the two dice that I have just eaten off the board. Maybe these were two dice that I had stored from a previous turn. Now I'm looking for particular combinations around the crack and track in here. And I can use any combination of fresh dice that I just ate and old dice that I've stored from before. So I happen to have a combination of four different dice, which it luckily is one of the combinations here around the Kraken. And to review those real quick, they are any combination that equals seven over two dice, a small pair, so that's a pair of ones, twos, or threes, a large pair, that's a pair of fours, fives, or sixes, a small straight, three of a kind, and then four of anything different, so four different sets. And that's what I have here. So I'm going to turn in those dice and I'm going to take that corresponding safe place token. So these are bonus points and are actually going to be the majority of your points that will win you the game. I'm going to keep that secret by placing it face down and then I'm also going to rescue my friend from that location which now prevents me from taking any more bonus points here. I can only accept a bonus token if I still have a friend left at that location so I will no longer be able to get any more bonus tiles off uh, here at the four of anything different. Now there's one more thing to do when you're rescuing your friends and that is if I used some fresh dice and if I used some colored dice, I'm going to move that color ahead spaces around the crack and track it. So I happen to use my own orange dice and I used one of them. So I'm going to advance my character one space. Had I used two blue dice, I would advance the blue character, the fish, two spaces. Now you don't give that bonus to old dice that you had stored from before. It only applies to this new fresh dice that I ate just this turn. Now it so happens that if you happen to award some bonus movement, and let's say I, I move my one space now, I cannot end a space on the Kraken Tracken with another character, so I would actually hop right over them. 
And anytime you move a character into this top headspace, that character is going to immediately get two bonuses. First, they get to look at one of these bonus tiles, the crack and coral. And all these are bonus points for the end of the game. So it's good to know maybe which one you want to go for. And second, that character gets a free rescue and correspondingly a free safe place point token. And you start just going in clockwise order. So if I move myself up here, I would actually get to go and rescue a second friend, whether I uh, turned in that dice combination or not. Of course, I could be moving a friend up into that location on my turn and giving them the bonus instead, but that's the price you pay for using their dice in this daring rescue. Now at the very end of a player's turn, the shark is going to move. So this is after I've built something, I've moved, I've possibly eaten and possibly stored the dice and or freed my friend, not both, and then the shark will move. The shark's movement is based on my character's movement. So my starfish here ended on this spot um, when I was done moving, and there's a picture of a shark with a one. So this shark is going to move one space th at the end of this turn. Now the shark moves in a figure eight around the board. So he is going to always use those uh, cross hatch dotted lines there. And if at any time during his movement, he crosses past a player or ends a spot on the same player, then that player is eaten, unfortunately. And that character is removed from the board and then brought back in either on the deep side or the shore side, it's that player's choice. Unfortunately, that player also gets a dead space token, which is added to your reef on any spot that you choose. And unfortunately, whatever spot this shows up on, that reef spot is now dead. And if it, you're covering up an icon, it's like that icon never existed. You also can't build over these, so they really get in the way on your reef. So it's a, a real rotten bummer when your uh, shark eats somebody. Finally, if the shark crosses over any of these spots that has a dice pitcher, you're going to add in a neutral die onto the wave. And that may cause the wave to fill up, in which case it will break. If the wave fills up on your turn, then it's going to break after the shark does this movement. So it's a little addendum onto the end of your turn. Now the wave can fill up at the start of your turn if you decide to add to the wave instead of adding to your reef. It can also fill up at the end of your turn when a shark crosses over one of these dice spots. But once all these dice spots are full, then the wave is going to break. Now, as you can hear, if any of the dice decide to fall off the board or off the table, then you're just going to reset them back up onto the top of the reef. Now the very first thing that happens is the shark is now going to do a 180. So if you previously had characters were safe that were safe, they might not be safe anymore in the next upcoming turn. The second thing you're gonna do is just organize all the dice into their respective rows. And if there's one that sort of splits the difference, it's always gonna to default to the lower row closer to the shore. And finally, you're gonna find all the dice in your color and you're gonna add up the pips because each player is going to get a bonus as long as they have three or more pips visible on the board. Now here are the bonuses you get from when the wave breaks. As long as you have three pips or more visible on the board, you will get something. Now those bonuses are adding one dice to the wave, adding two dice to the wave, moving your character two spots around the Kraken Tracken, or peeking at one of the Kraken Coral, which is bonuses at the end of the game, removing all of your dead spots off your reef, and peeking at one of the Kraken Coral, and finally, rescuing one of your friends. Don't be confused by that icon. You are actually rescuing only one and not two. And when you rescue that friend, just like you do when you get the bonus at the head of the Kraken, you're going to find the closest one in clockwise order, rescue that friend, and take the safe place token. So it's basically a complete rescue for free. Now let's say, for example, I have 18 pips pictured on the board. I can choose up to the 16 level or any one of these below. I can only pick one bonus, but I can go up to that level or pick any lesser one of my choice. So each player 
resolving in turn player order is going to get their bonus that they are able to acquire and resolve it immediately. Well, now we've reached the end of the game, and that happens when one character rescues all of their little friends. So if I'm the starfish character, and there are no remaining starfish here around the edge of the board, then I trigger the end of the game. Now, before we do our final tally for score, we're all going to get one more turn. This is what's called the sudden death turn in the, in the rules. So the uh, first thing we're going to do is actually remove all the characters from the Kraken Chacken, because we're no longer going to move them around. And then everyone's going to take one more turn, and 90% of that turn is going to be the same. You're still going to expand your reef or add dice to the wave. Then you must move one of your characters around the board. And then you may eat some dice if you want. And then just like you've done previously, you, if you have any friends left here to rescue, you can do so. Or this is your one chance and only chance to buy some of the Kraken Coral. Now, if you want to buy those Kraken Coral, you're going to have to turn in dice, just like you would for a rescue. Now, let's say I had these dice, and again, I can mix and match old dice that I had stored and new dice that I just ate. I am allowed to buy one Kraken Coral from the white group and one Kraken Coral from the black group, but I have to turn in the exact right amount of pips to do so, although that can be spread over any amount of die that it requires to make that happen. So with these three dice, I actually have two options. I could turn it in for a six and a seven, which is still one from the white, one from the black, or a three and a 10, I take that back, or a four and a nine. So I have a couple different options here with these three dice. So hopefully I've peaked throughout the course of the game and I have an idea of which one of these bonuses is going to give me the most points in the final scoring. Now, let's talk a little bit about final scoring. These are image of one of each of the crack and coral, and then these are a couple of those safe place tokens that we've seen before. My final score is gonna be some combination of these two items. Now keep in mind, I'm never gonna have more than two crack and coral. I just have them all laid out here so you can see all the different bonus pictures. Now, looking at those bonuses, they are one point for each one of these pictures in your reef. Now this is the one time where that rule that we followed the entire game is reversed. For any one of these three crack and coral, it's not how high, now it's how many. So that is exactly backwards. So if I have three waves pictured in my reef, I'm gonna get three points. Now if anyone has the uh, Poseidon's trident, that's gonna be a wild. That can be any one of the other four symbols pictured. It's also the first tiebreaker if there happens to be a tie for first. Now the final one carries some points, but it also carries a risk. If you have a clean reef, that is if you have no dead space tokens, then it's gonna be worth three points. However, if you are unfortunate enough to have some dead space tokens, then each one of them, if you have this tile, is going to be worth negative one points. So if my end bonus looks like this, I would get a point for each of the eating dice tokens, a point for each of the movement arrows that are in my reef, and then just total up how many safe play bonuses I have. And the person with the most points is going to be the winner. So those are the rules explanations of Poseidon's Kingdom by Fragor Games. If you have any further questions or rules clarifications, you can at this point refer to the rule book in the game box. And we hope you enjoy.